friends, it's Mrs. McCoy. Welcome back to the last week of Library at Home as third graders. I cannot believe that we've almost made it to the very end of the school year, and this will be our very last library lesson for third grade. I'm so proud of you guys. You have done amazing learning from home, having so much grit and working so hard. Great job, guys. So let's read our book. Let's check it out. I'm inside right now, as you can see, it's a little bit of a different background than we usually have because my neighbors are having a super fun time in their backyard, which is awesome, but it makes it a little bit hard for you to hear the story. So we're inside my house for today. Our book is called A Bus Called Heaven, and this is written and illustrated by Bob Graham, who is a cartoonist. You're going to notice kind of a cartoony quality to the illustrations, and he's from Australia. So it's called A Bus Called Heaven. Let's read it and see what happens. Abandoned. The bus appeared one morning from a sea of traffic right outside Stella's house, where no bus should be. Tired, old, and sick, it had a hand-painted sign on it held down with packing tape. The sign said, Heaven. Here's our title page. The story kind of started before the title page, a little interesting. It gave a little background and then it went to the title page. A Bus Called Heaven by Bob Graham. The bus brought change to Stella Street. Traffic slowed where no traffic had slowed before. People stopped and talked together, just a little, but they talked. Stella changed too. She took her thumb from her mouth, where it usually lived, and said, Mommy, that old bus is as sad as a whale on a beach. Then she pushed open the door and climbed on board. Stella, the color of moonlight, stood among the bottles, cans, and trash. She was so pale, you could almost see through her. It could be ours, she whispered. Whose? asked Nikki, Vicky, Alex, Yasmine, and Poe. What did she say? asked Mrs. Demetrios. Ours, she said louder. Well, whoever's it is, it needs to come off the road, said Stella's mom. And when dad came home that afternoon, he found an old bus where the front yard used to be. The wheels stick out onto the sidewalk, he said. There are sure to be regulations. Well, it's staying here, said Stella. That's my regulation. Next morning, Stella looked out her front window. People were sitting on the wall where no one had sat before. Under the bus were Esther, Rajit, Chelsea, and Charles. Mommy, said Stella, I'm going out. And she joined them. That day, the bus settled in. Weeds nudged up around the tires. Snails made silver trails, and a pair of sparrows nested in the old engine. While the children played, the grown-ups mopped and scrubbed and polished. That night, the bus got a bit of new paint. Uh-oh, those guys have spray cans. They're painting on the bus. They're not supposed to. Hello, boys, said Mom. I've got an idea. Come back tomorrow, and you can paint the whole bus. Make it sparkle. 
The next morning, Stella drew a picture for the rats to copy. Those boys were calling themselves the rats. But there they are. They're copying Stella's picture and painting the bus all pretty instead. What a good idea. People came with donations. Poppy brought her goldfish, Eric. Luke gave a set of super comics. Stella carried in her table soccer with the missing goalie. Mrs. Stavros brought a bus cake. Look, her cake is shaped like a bus. And Lucy lent her dog, Bear, for anyone who needed to just sit and pat something. Look, there's the whole neighborhood hanging out inside the bus. Lots and lots of little details in that illustration. Life returns to the old bus. Stella's fingers fluttered and her soccer players spun. Babies crawled. People laughed. Kids fought. Granddads scratched dogs. Meetings were planned. Couples met. And the Fingles showed their vacation pictures. There's some people showing their vacation pictures and it looks like everyone else is super bored. One Saturday morning, just outside Stella's house, there was music and dancing. There were picnics and laughter. When a tow truck arrived. Hmm, uh-oh. It's against regulations, said the driver. This bus is causing an obstruction. He means it sticks out, Stella's dad whispered. The bus has to go, said the driver. As the front wheels left the ground, snails dropped from under the bus, and a twittering came from the old engine. Go where? gasped the crowd. Got towed to the tow yard, the wrecker, where they take old junk cars. To the junkyard, came the reply. The crowd pleaded for their bus, but the junkyard boss came out to join the driver and shook his head. This one's for the crusher, he said. A little pink glow crept across Stella's cheek. Three rescued snails were deep in her pocket. Excuse me, she said. Shall we play table soccer? You can have the only goalie, but if I win, we'll keep the bus. And why, asked the junkyard boss, tell me why should I play you for the bus? Because, replied Stella, there are sparrows nesting in the engine. The game began. Handles spun. The ball smacked end to end. Then, goal! Stella scored. She followed that with nine more and won. The boss put out his hand. Joe, he said. Stella, said Stella. They shook hands. Then Stella ran to the front of the bus. Come and see, she said. Chicks! Amid the frantic flapping of the parent sparrow's wings, Joe the junkyard boss spoke quietly. Better get your bus to someplace safe, kid. Somewhere out of the way. 
thank you," said Stella. And the crowd cheered. I know where we can take it, said Stella. While the others pushed, she and Mom sat up front to steer. Almost back to where they'd started from. And when the old bus came to rest at last, everyone else needed a rest too. Well, almost everyone. <laughs> the kids are fine. They're still energetic. That evening, in the vacant lot just behind Stella's house, music drifted high over the city, and the grass was danced flat around a bus called Heaven. As a full moon rose, three snails slid safely back under the tires, and tomorrow, Stella will see the sparrow chicks fly for the first time. That's the end of A Bus Called Heaven by Bob Graham. I really liked that story, how that one unusual thing, the old bus getting abandoned there on the sidewalk, brought the entire neighborhood together. They kind of became a community. It brought Stella out of her shell. She was kind of shy and quiet before, and it made her more bold and she could speak her mind. And it brought all those neighbors together and turned them into friends. They became not just neighbors, but friends in a community. I like that one a lot. So before we end our lesson for today, um, I'm going to sh share my screen real quick and show you guys some options that we're working on for summer reading and also show you the library webpage where I'm going to have all of these stories that I've read while the school's been closed. I'm going to have those up over the summer. So if you feel like having me read you a story during summertime, you can still check that out, choose a story and listen to me read. So I'm going to share my screen. Take a look. All right, guys, here is the Carrillo Virtual Library. This is the little pretend library that I've made for everyone to be able to access at home. And I'll put a link to it in the description of this video and on Google Classroom so you can bookmark it, save it, so you can get back to it over the summer. Here is what it looks like right now. I'll move myself over here. Here's what it looks like. There's a cartoon Mrs. McCoy with the background of our actual library. And here on the left-hand side is whatever the current lesson is for the week. And here is what it will look like over the summer. There's this little extra page with the bookshelf and the books on those shelves are all of the books that I've read out loud while um, schools have been closed over the last couple of months. So any of these books that you click on the cover, you can listen, it's a link to take you to the video of me reading that story. So if you feel like having a story read to you during the summer break, you can go to this website, click on any of the books and listen to me read it. So that's one way to have stories read to you over the summer. Another activity that you can do during the summer, up here on the top of my website, you can see that it says SMUSD Library at Home. If you click there, it will take you to this website, which is one that myself, along with all of the other librarians from the San Marcos schools, we've created this. It's got a ton of resources like eBooks, ways to access books online if you can't go to the bookstore or go to the public library. Here are book clubs, read alouds, not just from me, but from the other librarians and teachers too. There's um, our research pages that you can go do research online, podcasts, extras has all kinds of virtual field trips and stuff. But we are working on some summer reading activities that are going to be available to you. Um, there's going to be things like bingo and choice boards where you can and choose different activities to do. Um, also, it's going to link to whatever the public library and Barnes and Noble and what they're doing for summer reading. And that's going to be listed right up here with all the different categories. It's not ready yet, so it's not posted on the website. But as soon as it is, it'll go up here. It'll be ready for you by the end of the school year. So you can keep growing your brain. You can keep learning at home. You can still have access to books that you can read online, even if we're still staying at home. So that is the SMUSD Library at Home page, and this is my own web page of just the stories that I have read. So I hope those things help you over the summer.
All right, I hope that some of those will be helpful for you over the summer. That is the end of our very last library at home video for third grade. I totally can't believe it. I am super proud of all of you for all of the hard work that you have put in while Carrillo has been closed. You've had grit, you've been flexible, you've stayed positive. You guys have done such an awesome job. It's really inspiring for me to see how you guys have handled this crazy situation. So I'm super proud of you. I miss you guys so much and I absolutely cannot wait until the day that we can all be together in the real library reading a story together again. So until then, keep reading over the summer, keep growing your brains, have like the most awesome summer ever, and I hope I get to see you guys again really soon, okay? I miss you friends. I love you. Bye!